about writing books today featuring Filipino American authors. And earlier you've met uh, a lot of them. Um, Steve is uh, a poet. He has a book on haikus and also a spiritual book. We're going to hear from him in just a little while as well. Gio um, wrote uh, some short stories and it was compiled in a book. And Sumi, you met earlier, wrote about her own story in a book. And we were talking about that. And another empowered woman is joining us right now, Leslie Ryan. Hello and welcome to Couple Hi. Ryan today. Nice to be here again. Let's Leslie is actually, this is her second time to join us here on the show. The first time, Leslie, we talked about your book, Fli I Am Flippish. Flippish, yes. Some people be like, because, you know, flip is, to some people is derogatory. But to me, I, you know, words are words. Mm -hmm. you, we put meaning into words, and that's how we interpret words. And that's why I don't think that any word per se is derogatory. But when you say flippish, some people that think maybe, ah, oh, why is she saying that? Why are you saying that? Well, you know, I've never had anybody come up to me and say that it sounds derogatory, but it's because it's Flippish meaning Filipino Irish. And you know how with the uh, Tagalog, with the F Filipino play in words? Taglish, like, Tagalog, Taglish, Taglish, English. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yes. And I was trying to explain to my children that they got the best of both worlds, which is Filipino and Irish. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they are Flippish. Mm -hmm. And so that's why that's how I explain to them about their their multicultural, you know, culturalism, like their dual identity, and they can have the best of both worlds. You wrote the book, and I'm thinking, you have different styles. Children's book, autobiography. You wrote it to teach about ancestry mm -hmm. to, for your kids. You wrote a, to teach, to make people understand what activism is about. But I guess the one thing that, that's common is writing. And I post this at the top of the program. Do people really sit down and read? Do you, when you write, were you thinking about who is going to read this? I started writing this autobiography because, as I mentioned, I'm 73, almost 74, and not much has been written about Filipinos in Colorado, mm. where my family settled in uh, the 40s. Mm. And there's a community there that hasn't been written about. And I think this history has to be somewhere. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the reasons I started writing this. What about you? When you wrote the book, you were thinking of your children. Were you thinking beyond your children, beyond educating them? Initially, I, I wrote it for my children, just to give them, you know, just to explain to them about being Filipino and Irish, being Hapa or Mestizo. Mm -hmm. And then when I showed it to a girlfriend of mine, she goes, you need to get this out because a lot of the families are Hapas or Mestizo or, you know, multi could they have like four different you know, yeah, um, multicultural households. It, it, yeah, lots of them. And mm. so she goes, "You need to get it out." Mm. And so it's like, you know what? You're right. So that's why I decided to um, to get it out and publish it. Mm -hmm. And after that, then it's been it's been crazy. You know. Yes, you've been touring different schools, giving lectures and talks, and so it was welcomed well. Oh, very much. So especially in Orange County, that's mm -hmm. where I've been doing a lot of my in my lectures and recently one in LA right and I you know I talk about how we're all products of immigration mm -hmm. you know America is built mm -hmm. on immigrants mm -hmm. and so that's why you know that's why even, even though they're they came from you know hundreds of years ago we're still products of immigration and Sumi that's kind of like along the lines of what she's saying because when you talk about your community in Colorado, the Filipino community in Colorado, which is, you know, we, we're all immigrants to this country. Um, you, how is your book being received? Um, it's being received quite well, actually. People don't realize first that I was born here. Mm -hmm. So when people say you speak English really good, yes, yes. it just drives That's me right, back. Right, right. Um, but I was born here and I never learned Ilocano. Mm -hmm. But I was the only, we were the only white family in our Arvada, Colorado. Mm -hmm. And that was different. I didn't know until I came to Hollywood mm -hmm. that I wasn't a regular American. Right. Well, here you are telling your stories. Are people actually reading? Do you think they are reading? And how is technology helping? Leslie. Well, first of all, I love having you reading from my iPad yeah. because if I want a book, I don't have to drive right. to the nearest bookstore. Right. I can just download it. Right. But the smell of paper, oh, right? Oh, there's nothing like right? the smell of paper. That's right. <laughs> Anyways, okay, right. continue. And so to me, it's people are reading. Like for me, I can sit down 
and and read a book all day, mm -hmm. you know, of my off day with no soccer, no right. taekwondo, no yeah. nothing. And I love it. It's a way to relax. And I hope, you know, I'm big into promoting literacy, especially in children, mm -hmm. because it will, you know, reading will take you to a different level, to a different world. Mm -hmm. And because you develop their imagination also, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Um, Sumi, what about you? Is it, is, do you think it's easier to publish a book now because of the digital, yes. in the digital age, or was it better before? I think it's really easy now, and a lot of people are self-publishing. Mm -hmm. I have a publisher, but um, Kindle makes it easy to get a book, and right. you don't pay a lot. Right. But I was a kid that was hiding under the covers and reading books. Oh. I grew up with books. Oh, okay. I grew up writing. And now you are both empowered women. Something should be, you know, the parents out there, you know, they grew up reading. And now look at where they are. Look at what they've accomplished. Maybe you should start getting your kids into reading books as well. One more segment on Couple Vine today. When we return, we'll have Steve back. I asked him earlier to recite a, a haiku in Hawaiian. We'll see how, how he does that later when we return. Don't go away.